and uh, we'll call on Evelyn Underwood. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Dr. Underwood. Yes. Um, you know, I hadn't planned to speak. I thought I had put my hands down, but I am going to go ahead and uh, reiterate um, what I, I talked about last week, uh, the stops. And I think you all got that information uh, from me. And um, I have talked to other people that did not get an opportunity to speak last week and who um, uh, said that they, some of them sent emails to you. But many of the people that I spoke with, um, as I forestated, they are agreeing with me about the first step um, of the chief um, uh, uh, material that he uh, submitted. However, to be more comprehensive, uh, uh, they feel that the city council should really uh, take a look at, uh, and I told them, and I, I think I'm correct, that Mr. Doral Cruz did send the information to the city council. Uh, is that true? I yes. mean, I know it's true, he wouldn't lie, but uh, did you guys get the information that he sent, the resolution? Yes. Okay, uh, uh, to the city council. And uh, I had sent in, uh, materials to the people that I spoke with and they were in agreement that it would really be more comprehensive. And it could, uh, uh, the chief uh, material could be a subset of what he's, uh, Mr. Uh, Durrell Cruz uh, has submitted to the council. And they feel it's more comprehensive. Now, uh, I said, well, uh, if you didn't get to the city council, it's not like it used to be with just COVID-19. I don't know if it would be better for us to maybe get maybe 100, uh, uh, 200 or 300 uh, 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 petitions, you know, sign petitions saying that they uh, want this. Uh, maybe they will be better because we can't come to a meeting and with everything that's going on with COVID-19, people are fearful of getting, you know, uh, I, but I, I go door to door, you know, and get signatures uh, from the people who feel that we should look at this because uh, with what I understand, people are not running for city council. Um, we're going to have new city council people. They're going to have to have time to uh, get up to speed. On, on what's going on and um, and without that continuity, it's going to take more time. And as I suggested last week that we should have a, get like a, 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 a quarterly report on, on the chief's uh, proposal. Uh, and, um, uh, uh, and if we can, I don't know if it's too late, but I don't think it is for us to take a look uh, maybe we should have a, a study session or something on what Durrell Cruz has submitted. It's not like he's a Johnny come lately. He's been working on this for 14 years or, or more. I've had him on several of my radio and television programs, giving information to the people he spoke to, the Ministerial Alliance and other uh, uh, organization about these stops. He's been on this for some time. And I know myself, when I was president of Ministerial Alliance, I was uh, very involved in the task force. And I know he sent more information than probably anybody. He probably did as much work as the people who were asked to be on the task force. So this is not a Johnny come lately thing. This gentleman has worked for years on this. And I've been involved for years and I've gotten the information out to a lot of people. So I didn't have to bring them up to speed because a lot of people know uh, about a lot of uh, information that I have been giving out to them uh, uh, over the years. So uh, I don't know if my time is almost up. I, I had my eyes closed <laughs> when I was yeah. talking. But anyway, uh, uh, that's what I have to say. And thank you very much. Maybe thank God you. did want me to speak. I thought I had put my hand down, but maybe uh, somehow God put it back up because uh, I wanted the council to really hear this. Is it up? My time up? Thank you. Your time is up and your hand Thank is you. still up too. Thank you. Um, next up is Alan Max Axelrod. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you put the clock up, please?
In politics, it is of the utmost naivete for one to assume that the maneuvers they do have not been potentially anticipated or even seen somewhere else. So I rhetorically ask, what reasons did the city council of Urbana think that I had for mentioning that Bloomington city council had moved on utility shutoffs? Let's start with the obvious one. To apply additional pressure that another municipal government, which had barely been talked to, is potentially moving faster than this municipal government on the issue of shutoffs. I say the following with the utmost benefit of doubt for the intellect of those whom I address. If those in power prioritized data and human rights over their image, then pressure would not have been needed in the first place on the issue of utility shutoffs and so many other issues. Now let's go to the less obvious. As expected, the city of Urbana misrepresented information to the Bloomington mayor. I tested both the city of Urbana and the city of Champaign on this matter. And not only was it that the city of Urbana did this, but it was telegraphed in council comments last week to boot. From the culturally pervasive anime, Yu-Gi-Oh, you've activated my trap card. This city council has shown that when presented with data and facts, it could either not understand them or did not want to during a pandemic, rendering the majority of this body empirically wholly unqualified for public service. We need public servants who prioritize human rights over their image. And I will now be taking a more active role in ensuring that. The city council is not an authority on emergency powers. Not only has the city staff been the source of all the factual incorrect statements made during the No Ameren Shutoffs campaign, the city Champagne staff have been factually correct about irrelevant details as their strategy instead, and neither have substantively addressed emergency powers. Neither of you will be the authority on this. The Champaign-Urbana Public Health District has all the facts. Their administrator has the power to act through another emergency body. And unlike the legal counsels for both Champaign and Urbana, they are actively researching on the matter for over a week. Lying to the public during a pandemic about pandemic safety options is forever a part of the image of this council. To quote the Decatur Public School Systems candidate, Kevin Ryan Collins Brown, who spoke during the Decatur Federation of Teaching Assistants um, rally after they were retaliated against during a strike, how is your image now? Good night. Next up is Brian Dunn. Hey, can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Just want to say shout out Alan Axelrod, shout out Evelyn Underwood, shout out all the awesome people in our community who are, you know, doing the stuff, going to the community, flyering, going door to door, risking their health during a pandemic to inform, to care, to let people know that they're not alone and that people are actually addressing these issues that affect their everyday lives. And yeah, it's just inspiring, you know, as someone who cares about this community, Urbana and Champaign, it's people like them that really make this place go around. And it's just, uh, you know, I just want to come over here and just sing some praises, send some posy vibes, because the, the amount of good that they do is insurmountable. And they don't do it for an elected position. Well, you know, Evelyn's been in elected positions before, but she would be doing it regardless. Alan would be doing it regardless. And I just wish that the people in the elected positions would spend less time trying to hamper what people are able to say during public comments and more time listening 
to what the people are saying during public comments and actually taking action on the information, which is very good and very well researched. And it could, you know, during a pandemic, it's not too much to say could save lives. So please take considerations to limiting the role and responsibility of police seriously. Take the considerations of no Ameren shutoffs seriously and do some work to make this community a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Tracy Chong. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Tracy Chong from Urbana. Um, two weeks ago, Chief Serafin finally admitted that um, Officer Ruff's handling of his rifle was a violation of policy during the Alia Lewis arrest, effectively destroying all public trust in Urbana Police Department internal reviews and external bias reviews hired by the city. The ineffective internal reviews by UPD are especially concerning since the excessive use of force during the earlier Lewis arrest is not an isolated incident. We just happen to be fortunate that the incident was captured on video by a stander and then brought to light. I'm going to describe an incident that UPD has tried to keep under wraps and hope that concerned members of the public and city council members will follow up and look into it. In January this year, CPRB board members reviewed a case um, from 2019 where a taser was deployed using a drive stand method, which is prohibited under the UPD policy. Deputy Chief Richard Searles only showed about a minute of taser cam footage, which gave no context of the whole incident that took place. Watching the footage, board members wanted more video, such as squad camera video, to further examine the situation. However, um, Searles just could not explain why he could not produce the squad cam video, nor answer if there was any more footage available from other officers on scene. He then promised to look into it and produce additional footage. Of course, this promise was conveniently forgotten until I brought it up over and over again at each CPRB meeting. Finally, at the last CPRB meeting, a short video from the squad car cam was from the squad car cam was produced. This video, which Deputy Chief Sells had kept under wraps, shows an individual approaching two police officers. He was concerned about his girlfriend, who was just arrested for an active warrant. At this point, the officers had, begin, had been called regarding a domestic dispute. Um, this guy was not wanted or suspected of any crime, um, and there was no report of a weapon. The next thing that happens is that the officer reaches out and pushes the guy, and the guy responds by trying to block the officer's hand. Within a couple of seconds, with no warning from the officers, this guy is tased as he is backing away with his arms up in the air. After the first tasing, he is tackled by four police officers, pinned to the ground, and he is tased again with the prohibited drive stun method. Interestingly, Searles reported to CPRB that this guy had shoved the officers to justify that the tasing was according to policy because the guy was aggressive. Does this sound familiar? The video shows otherwise, making it a violation of policy to even use the taser in this case. This video also shows a violation of UPD taser policy, um, a violation of UPD taser policy whereby officers are required to give verbal warnings and give reasonable opportunity to comply. Again, this did not happen. Then, well, while the unarmed guy was pinned down by four police officers, a drive stun, which is prohibited by UP, UPD policy, was performed. When newly appointed CPRB board member Tony Allegretti saw this footage, he immediately raised up all these points, which I just brought up. And members of the public watching it, we all had these same thoughts. Um, I don't know what will happen next, but these type of incidents will keep on happening over and over again. Seeing the broken review process and how Urbana is moving in the opposite direction of transparency and accountability, most of these cases will just remain hidden from the public until the next incident is recorded um, or go, God forbid, someone dies, someone is killed or murdered by police officers. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is James Corbin.
Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, City Council, for allowing me to speak. Uh, yes, my name is James Corbin, and I live in Urbana. And uh, I work with First Followers as a mentor and a drop-in center. We run a drop-in center at Outreach Specialist. Um, I'm just speaking today, just starting my day today, and some of the things that we've been facing as a, a reentry group. One of the things, just starting my day today, I started off at seven o'clock a.m. and you know, got ready. And by eight o'clock, uh, I was already getting phone calls from individuals within the community looking for either housing, work, or other services such as uh, food or uh, help with connecting with other services. Now. This has been consistent ever since we have done an outreach, a flyer outreach mailing campaign, which, is, which was very successful. And we only reached out to uh, those individuals who have recently been released from probation. So since then, our organization has been inundated with calls coming from these individuals looking for such services housing and emergency housing, as well as clothes, other items. Now, we have been providing a few of these things, such as backpacks, um, with backpacks with hygiene, uh, COVID tests, uh, well as a 14-day quarantine, quarantine stay in local hotels, a smartphone, as well as $200 cash card so they could go shopping. And that's and that was the result of the city of Champaign providing this funds for our organization to provide these services. So, and uh, as, a, as we are a small group or a small organization and our team works hard, we work very hard, uh, all our guys out. But we would like to see if, or we request, maybe if Urbana could probably match these same type of services and to help provide a, uh, a backpack, maybe a, a help with the hotel in order to, so that we could better serve our constituents within, you know, Urbana and Champaign. One of the biggest issues I'm, I'm, I keep running into is housing. Now, the voucher that uh, Champaign has offered uh, pays three months. It pays up to three months plus uh, the security deposit. And that's great. But finding housing in Champaign for someone who has a criminal background is still hard or you know, it, it has its issues. So housing is more available in Urbana, but we don't have that type of voucher offered for Urbana. So it would be great if we could have that service offered or that the resource actually in Urbana as well as Champaign. And then these two cities could kind of, you know, be in tandem with each other and we could better serve the, the uh, people of both cities. That's all I would really like to say at this time. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, James. I will, um, I will add that um, the social service funding for this year was first followers were included in social service grants and we'll follow up to make sure that that money has actually been released. And um, in the meantime, people can call 211 for assistance, especially during COVID. That's a good place to start. That's a general number, but people can, you know, from there can determine what services are needed, but we'll follow up and make sure the social service funding um, grant that was approved for first followers has been released. And that was, um, I don't remember offhand, but it was, um, I believe several, tens of thousands of dollars. So, but thank you. Um, next up is Christopher Hansen. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, my name is Christopher Hansen. I've lived in Urbana for 18 years. Um, last week's meeting was rather impressive, silencing members of the public for expressing their opinions. Um, I mean, we haven't you gone to the to the point of uh, a comedy now? I mean, uh, what are you guys thinking? It was interesting uh, when you guys switched between the open and closed meetings to hear Sharice Hersey drop the F-bomb a few times. Um, 
it's interesting that you allow that kind of thing and then uh, you'll mute people for expressing their opinions or mentioning elected officials. Do, do you guys have any concept for how far you've gone in the direction of being completely corrupt? I mean, actually, actually shutting down public speech at open meetings. Uh, you went through this whole public records scheme where you tried to defraud the public of thousands of dollars for, for public records, for police records. I mean, do you have any idea where, where you've put yourselves, how much you've normalized corruption in Urbana? Or are you just completely unaware? Um, so anyways, now you're facing a lawsuit for your Open Meetings Act violations, and uh, that's going to be something you have to deal with now, and I would surely like to see any of you comment on that. Um, and the lawsuit is posted on checkcu.org if anyone wants to read it. And also the, the arrest that Tracy Chong described earlier uh, is documented also with video on checkcu.org if anyone wants to see that. Um, so I'll uh, go into my uh, issues here. Um, I was really concerned about the police listening sessions that happened a week or two ago. You know, we have our, our new community engagement coordinator, Lamont Peppers, and his title is community engagement coordinator. Uh, I couldn't help notice that no youth, zero youth wanted to participate in that listening session. And I wonder if it had anything to do with the really intimidating, heavy handed uh, rules that Mr. Peppers put forth at that listening session. And then uh, Lamont Peppers muted someone at the second listening session for mentioning the Alea Lewis arrest review. Um, and I'm wondering, you <laughs> calling them listening sessions, it, it's just, it's just so absurd. Uh, now you you have to, whenever you reference those sessions, you need to do it keeping in mind that you didn't actually get to hear from the community because you told them, we don't wanna hear certain things that you have to say. And then if they said it, you muted them. So I don't know what you thought you were gonna get out of that. Uh, I'm wondering how many of you watched the human rights hearing on November 10th. I know Bill Brown watched it. Uh, I emailed him about it, but he didn't write me back. Uh, the city attorney, James Simon is, in my opinion, a, just a terrible embarrassment to the city of Urbana. Um, as far as I can tell, he has no sense of ethics. And Mayor Marlin has assigned him to be the ethics officer for the city of Urbana. Uh, what a ridiculous situation we've gotten ourselves into. By the way, did the city and council intend that the boards and commissions would not be able to vote to extend speaking time at meetings? Because that's what James Simon tried to tell the Human Relations Commission at that meeting. Also, I noticed that the meeting rules for that meeting indicated four minutes of speaking time, but since that was a physical physical meeting, it should have been five minutes, right? Or did you guys not think of hybrid meetings? Maybe you didn't think at all. Uh, Simon claimed at that hearing that the city of Urbana and its agents are allowed to discriminate against both residents and its own employees. Um, and this is one of the most morally hazardous postures that I've seen anyone take in the city of Urbana. I'm flabbergasted that this person, James Simon, the city's ethics officer, uh, is making this claim. And it's hard to think of a more ethically backwards individual to be to be putting in that position of, of human relations officer. It's just constantly lying, lying and, and conspiring to commit illegal acts in regards to FOIA. Mr. Hansen, Mr. Hansen, that's your interpretation. Please stick to the facts. I'm telling and you facts. Yes. Time is up. Thank you very much. Ms. Wilkin is next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Whew. Try and follow all of those. Um, my name is Grace Wilkin. I'm an Urbana resident. And I have a few questions and comments for tonight. Um, I was wondering about the one door program because in the police listening sessions that were not very open listening, um, definitely there was mention of the one door program and that it would be presented to council soon with some updates. So I'm just wondering what's going on with that and when we'll hear more. Another question was about the comprehensive plan um, and the same kind of deal. What's that status um, and when will there be a time for public input? on both of these issues, one door and the comprehensive plan, and also when will there be a time and space for city commissions input. And I'm just wondering generally how we utilize these city commissions. Um, I'm on one and it doesn't seem to be very connected to the council, the city. Um, it just seems like if 
the city has this whole group of experts in different areas and wants to have them volunteer and be consulted that they could be a little more utilized. So I'm just wondering how that all plays in and when the public and the commissions can have a chance for input on one door and the comprehensive plan. I think we need um, accountability in our city and we need more diverse input on these kinds of planning issues. We also need to address the clear racism and other issues in Urbana, um, big issues with homelessness. There's definitely not enough services. A lot of people are doing really great work, um, some within institutions and a lot on their own personal time or with nonprofits. And there's still so much more that needs to be done. Uh, thanks for listening to Tiger or James Corbin about first followers and the essential services that they provide in the community. And yes, please do follow up on that grant and at least match Champagne's contributions. And I encourage you to continue to look into this and work towards a point where it doesn't depend on people doing it out of the goodness of the heart and sacrificing their own resources to where this can come out of the city resources and the money and all of the resources that we already have in the city. Um, please address the racism in our policing, schools, criminal and justice system. I also wanted to go back to last meeting. I believe that was last week on the reports of traffic stops and the ridiculousness that anyone would think that police can't be racist in the dark. We have a whole long history of sundown towns and racial violence after dark. Um, police can see drivers, they can run plates, and they can see descriptions like blue versus brown eyes. They can patrol certain neighborhoods, they can stop certain types of cars. There are so many ways to be racist after dark. So I thought that was an interesting thing that um, clearly doesn't make any sense. Um, so please overall reflect on the values, the funding, and the transparency of the city, that this is not the Urbana that the community typically thinks of or that we want. Uh, we also need to address issues with utility shutoffs and general economic hardships um, because of COVID-19, but also just in general. And also about the tree grant that is on the agenda tonight. I think that's a great thing. Great work to Scott and the city for getting this grant. Um, it's 50 trees, which is definitely a step, but it's definitely not the end result. So please continue to push that area and don't stop there. That's all. Bye. Thank you. Um, next up is Bo Barber. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so hi, this is Bo Barber from Ville de Vogue in Illinois. Um, I wasn't gonna comment tonight, but after learning of some recent developments in regards to what the council decided to do, in regards to approaching Bloomington City Council, I'll be honest, I'm very frustrated and incredibly disappointed. Um, I've been sending, you know, I've, I've sent people out to canvas or, you know, send or post flyers places so people could know what resources to go to if they were at risk of being disconnected or had they had been disconnected in the middle of a pandemic. I'm my, my organizers know what they're doing. They know the risks involved. They are being as incredibly as responsible as possible, but there's this, this is still a health risk they are taking for themselves. And I commend them for that. These people care about the community and are putting their necks out for people in their community because they care. So when, so when I hear this, that this is actions have been taken to undermine us going to Bloomington city council. I'm frustrated. What am I supposed to do? This is, uh, I told you this in the last city council meeting, y'all I'm fighting a losing battle here. It, l luckily through this efforts that we've been working on for months, no, no, thank, no thanks to a lot of other people in power, except for CUPHD. Um, we've managed to push Amarin to try and hopefully I don't trust them still. I wouldn't trust them with my wallet. Um, to hopefully start with that moratorium two weeks early, which is still a mean tested thing. It's not going to solve all our problems. It's going to help a heck of a lot, but it's not going to solve all our problems. And so to have this just happen i mean what do you want us to what, what are we supposed to do do your job for you i'm angry i i expect better out of this 
you're our elected representatives. I mean, I don't know. I live outside in the rural part of this county, but if several hundred people get sick in Urbana, my family back home with my two plus six year old parents are at a higher risk because this stuff spreads like a wildfire. I get, I, I care. And it's not just my family that I care about. I love them dearly and would do anything for them. But this is everybody in this community. These are all my friends who are knocking on the doors, all the organizers, all the people who are working at CUPHD, Canaan Township to try and get this done. I'm tired of it. I don't want to do it anymore. I, I'll do it because I need to, but I have put the rest of my life on hold. I put my research on hold. I put my work on hold. I am falling behind in my, I'm falling behind in my responsibilities as a TA to make sure this gets done. So I cannot believe that y'all went behind our backs to try and this way, Bloomington City Council and trying to just, I don't know. I'm frustrated. I hope y'all can do better. Minus Jared, because Jared's the one person that I re really approve of. And he does. He listens to the people. He cares about his constituents. And he talks to He talks to us. He talks to everybody. He's making sure people are OK. Y'all need to step up to the plate. Y'all need to get this. Y'all need to start doing what you need to do for your constituents. I do not care for any legal opinion that James Simons thinks he has. That's the only thing I'm going to say about any city staff. Unless he brings up the emergency disaster services agency that Alan had mentioned and cites it in anything in opposition, anything previous to that is a moot point that he makes. I am done. Okay, we're gonna do this without you. We're gonna do this in spite of you. We're gonna save these people. We're gonna we're gonna do what we can to try and save everybody, even if it's a failing battle here. No, because we're gonna try. So what are you gonna do? That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you. Have a good night.